The video you're about to watch is from God Ministries, uh, ministered by Gustave LaRue from one of our spirit schools in Picayune. We had an all-day spirit school. It is deep. It is good. You will enjoy it. Please subscribe. Have a great day and enjoy. Just find yourself stepping deeper and deeper into Him. And I want to throw it out there. Today is a spirit day. The idea of today is to have your spirit consumed and aligned to such a place, to such a degree that everything you've learned over the last six months can be poured into your soul and your body so it can begin to affect everything you touch, that it can begin to affect everything that you do. The idea of today is that you can begin to walk in this stuff, begin to understand it and begin to make it your own. I believe the Father wants to take us all, every one of us, to a place where we've never been. I love experiencing new things. I love going deeper and deeper and deeper into Yahweh. I love just soaking Him up and just finding myself at His feet, eating of Him, drinking of Him, being reminded of how awesome and how majestic and how beautiful He is, how much He wants to just absolutely pour His glory over us. How He wants to soak us in His presence. How He wants us to live in Him. And I want to urge you today that as we go through all these things, it will be a recap. And as we begin to, to remember the things that we taught, that you will engage in it once again. As a matter of fact, the next week, the next two, three weeks of your life is for you to engage and go deeper than what you've got before. So today, Father, I pray for revelation and insight. I pray for a new dimension of what already has been taught. But as we go through a recap of this, it will literally ignite a new dimension of revelation for every subject. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. You're an awesome God. Amen. 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 Whew. Okay. Uh, how are you guys doing? So I, 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 would, I guess it was over the last six months, it might have been less, it might have been more, but over the last six months we have done, the last all day school we had, we were still busy with the, the crowns. So we didn't touch on the crowns, we only did what we did previously. So today we'll start and touch base on the crowns, we'll go and speak a little bit about the angels, we'll go over the seven spirits, the mobile court, the heavenly courts, We'll do the portholes from Psalm 23. We'll talk about the godly trading, the money trading, and then we started with the Joshua generation. We'll go over some of it because we're almost done with it. And I believe that if we just take the recap and find ourselves in full perception of what the Father has for us, it could change our lives, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> the crowns, it's really, for me personally, it's uh, something that I had to go back into. So let's just start with the scriptures that brings us to a place of understanding. In Revelations 1 verse 2 it says, Then I turned to see who was talking to me, and when I turned I saw seven gold lampstands. Among the lampstands there were some like, someone like the Son of Man. Now understand, someone like the Son of Man is not the Son of Man. Amen. <laughs> That's just logic, right? He was wearing a long robe with gold sashes around his chest. His head and his hair were like with white like wool. In fact, as white as snow. His eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like glowing bronze in fine, uh, in, fine in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of raging waters. In his hand, um, in his right hand, he had seven stars. And out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun when it shines with its fullness. Now, just to throw it out there for you, this is the image of the fully matured sun walking in the spirit. Okay, because the idea has always been that we are in the full image of Yeshua. Now, I need you to understand, Jesus uh, Christ, the Son of the Most High, in the kingdom of heaven, He doesn't have a double-edged sword coming out of His mouth. He is a double-edged sword. Okay, so out of the Son of Yahweh, out of the Son of Yeshua, or out of, out of, out of the um, image of God comes the sword. That's me and you. 
So the crown is to bring us to a place of restoration. Because in your walk with Yahweh, because of man, because of the enemy, and because of sin in our lives, we have lost many of the things that the Father has given us as spirit beings. It is, it is the crowns. And that's why one of the most important things us as believers to have an understanding of. In Revelation, it tells us that the 24 elders bow down before one who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. They put their crowns down, they cast it, lay it down um, before his throne. This is the idea, and I've said this, I said this last night, and I want to just throw it out there. I, I have many schools, and so I preach all the time, so I never really know who I said what to. But last night, I was reminding the guys, we were talking about the seven spirits, and I love the fact that everything you trade with a father with, his desire is to multiply it back to you. So it doesn't matter whether you take your crown and you lay it at his feet. His desire for you is to, to literally take that crown and multiply it back to you. But because we've lost our crowns, so let's just quickly go through the crowns. We've got the crown of righteousness, the crown of life, the crown of glory, the crown of uh, incorruptible, the incorruptible crown, the crown of the anointing oil, the crown of rejoicing, the servant king crown. Now the idea with these crowns is that as we, and I want to go through every aspect of every one of these crowns, but I might just touch base of each of them. The idea is that I'm reminded that I have to go into the spirit because if you've lost your crown of righteousness, you will begin to understand that there's a lack of perception in you regarding the righteous man or woman that you are according to what the Father has given you in the gift of Yeshua. Right. And it'll be a lack of understanding. And it could be because of teachings that man gave you that took from you the truth. That took from you of who and what righteousness really means. So the idea is that I go back in the spirit according to what the Father is leading me into. And I find that crown. And I put it back on my head. And when I, once I put it back on my head and it's mine again, the idea is immediately to go into the kingdom, into the... Um, the, 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 the um, The sea of glass, now I really understand the sea of glass is not glass. Right. Okay, that's just great. Right, it's not glass. It just looks like glass. But the idea is that I go and I trade my crown of righteousness at the feet of Yahweh. So that he can take it and multiply it back to me. He multiplies it back to me with revelation regarding who and what I am as a righteous son of the Most High. The power that comes with that dimension of who I am and what he wants to pour into me. Exciting, isn't it? Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to those who uh, loved his appearing. The crown of righteousness is that dimension of your walk that brings you to a place of understanding that nothing you do is going to make him love you less. Right. Nothing you do is going to make him love you more. Come on. The idea of righteousness says because of the blood of Yeshua and what he did on the cross, I stand before the Father and I'm in the perfect alignment to him. It's the right standing, righteousness. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 The crown of life, it comes from James, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, from when he has uh, been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now this crown is, is that, th this crown is received through the trials of life and the dealing of temptation. Becoming a place, uh, coming to a place of ex uh, expressive, abundant, abund abandonment and love of Jesus Christ. Uh, as we experience the victory uh, every day over sin. So understand this quickly. The crown of life is that dimension of your life where you've had victory over. Amen. Now I know according to where, where we are at that there's some areas in our lives that we just struggle with and we cannot find the victory that we need. That's that place in your life where you lost your crown. That's where we have to go back in the spirit and find it. Now it could be it could be something you've done. It could be something someone said that knocked it off of you. 
Now, I'm going to carry on and doing this and saying this all the time because I really need you to have an understanding of what you have to do. Because you have to regain your crowns. You have to have an understanding where you lost it, if you lost it. Maybe you haven't lost it. Maybe you have the full dimension of this crown of life that you carry. And the Father's already multiplying it back to you. Mm -hmm. Are you guys okay? Yes, yes, yes. And could it be that I'm not aware of it? It could absolutely be that you're not aware of it. Most of the stuff we are not aware of. Because it's never been taught. Right. Now, I mean, I've been in church for a long time. I've been saved for 23 years. And I have never, never heard anybody teach on this stuff. Amen. I mean, I've had Bible schools, and I've said this to you guys, I've done 13 years of Bible school, and the subjects I'm doing now, I've never heard teach, even in the Bible schools I went to. Amen. So, it's, I believe it's a re new revelation that the Father is pouring into the body, and it's not new because it's always been there, it's just never been a focus. Right. Yeah. Because the, the, the leaders of our generation has just been afraid to release these type of things into the nation, because it's so spiritual that it might chase half the church away. And I say that because I have friends in South Africa that told us many times, no, we don't want nothing to do with demons. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear about them. I don't want to know about them because I don't want them near me. Yet they are bringing so much destruction in their lives because it's not being dealt with. Yeah. And that's why we have lost so much in our walk because it has not been dealt with. Ignorance. Ignorance, yes. So the idea of the crown of life is that I look back and I begin to see the victories that I've had. I begin to see the victories that I've had at a time, and then I have lost that victory. Mm -hmm. Which means I've gone back to an old habit, or I've gone back to something that I struggled with, or, or I've had a victory and I held on it for a long time, and now I find myself believing certain things again, or acting upon certain things again, or having certain sins again. It's, it's coming back into my life. On, and so the idea is then to go back into the spirit and find your crown. Take it to the sea of glass where you present it to the Father at the throne by His feet. He takes it as you give it to Him and He multiplies it back to you. Amen. That's the, the awesome majestic God that we walk with. The crown of glory. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. When the Christ in you begins to manifest around you and you manifest God in the world around you as a king. Then the crown of glory is manifested and revealed to you um, <coughs> in the spirit world. The crown of glory is that dimension of the Father over you that's visible. Mm. Where people would literally come to you and say, what is it about you? Come on. I remember sitting at the gym and I was waiting for my next client. I was a personal trainer. And one of the other personal trainers comes up to me and says, wow, you, are so, you look so peaceful. And I said to him, well, I have peace. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, I need you to understand, that's a visible thing that people see. He's not a Christian. Matter of fact, he was a bisexual, um, which means he, he loves women and men. He sleeps with men and women. He actually, at that point, had an American boyfriend that he, that he brought back from America. You know, so he, he was uh, uh, consumed in his sin, but he could still see the glory yeah. on me. Right. Now, I know the glory has increased because people would come up to me and just... Just say, why are you always so happy? Yeah. You're always the same. You're never depressed. You're never unhappy. You're always just so bubbly and full of joy and happiness. Yes, well, it's the glory. Yes. I, I can't help myself. I don't have to be any different. You know, I wake up in the morning and I might feel depressed, but that has to be dealt with. Deal with. You know, it's my decision. I don't wake up and drag my feelings with me through the day because my feeling is not in, it's not in charge of me. Come on. I live by faith. by faith. And by faith, I have another statement to make and it has nothing to do with what I feel. Yeah. Okay, so my feelings has to subject itself to my spirit and my spirit wakes up with my body and my soul but has been in the kingdom of heaven for the last five hours or three hours or however long I've slept. Amen. Because the idea is that that affects my body and brings me into the fullness of the glory of Yahweh. Come on, come on, come That's on. why it's so important for us to understand, well, I don't have to go down on my knees and put my hands together and pray for me to be praying. Okay. It's a dimensional shift that takes place as my whole being goes into the Father and I communicate with Him through my desires and through who I am. Amen. I don't speak to Him and say, Father, I want this, I want that, because that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I can't have a relationship with somebody and just want stuff. Yeah. 
And I've said this before. My relationship with the Father cannot be based on a need and a want. Amen. And I'll forgive my sins. If I had to go to my wife and say, baby, I'm so sorry I cheated on you again today. It's only the, the, the seventh time this year. Please forgive me. You know, if I haven't been shot by the first time, uh, I would be crippled by the seventh time. As a matter of fact, I don't think there would be that much. Yeah. There wouldn't be that many. But his mercy endures forever. Right. My wife's mercy is going to stop at number one. That's yeah. just a fact. Okay, so and I, and it's, not, it's not a relationship. I can't have that in a relationship. Come and on. if you have a relationship like that, then there's something seriously wrong with the other side. Yes. Because a woman that continually accepts a man by after he cheated on her has issues. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and what's God doing? Why are we constantly standing before Him asking Him to forgive our sins? Yes. If His focus is not your sin, why is your focus your sin? Come on. You know, it's because we have this perception, well, He only looks at what I do wrong. Because that's what the church taught us. But he doesn't do that. He looks at you through the blood. That is the, yes. the eye lens yes. that he has on. Mm. The blood of Yeshua. He sees you as pure as snow. Yes. As white as snow. So we need to begin to understand that. His desire for you is to shift away from confessing your sins. It's to shift away from asking him to supply your needs. Come on now. All right. Come on. Shift His desire wind. with the crown of glory is for you to step into a place where you are continuously in him, washed uh, by the blood, and He's continually washing over you the presence and the glory and the fire. In the fullness. Oh, yes. and so the idea is where you can go back in oh. to that place in the spirit where you feel you've lost it and regain that crown. Yes. If it, you know what the Satan would do is he would take it and he would hide it away from you, mm -hmm. because he'll take your focus off it. It makes you feel condemned. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But the ability we have is to go back in the spirit and take it. Yes. And again, you lay it down at the foot by the sea of glass and you present it to the Father. He multiplies it back to you. Amen. That's what I love about him. He's just absolutely amazing. The incorruptible crown. <coughs> and every man that serves, strives to self-control, uh, is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. This crown represents, is represented by our personal yieldness to the life of God, doing His will and the personal pursuit to His presence. Because unless you go into the presence, you will still remain corruptible. This is uh, an, another dimension of the, um, not so much the glorified man, although that's the process, but it's going into the spirit and finding yourself with, with Yeshua, Moses, and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm. It's the burning and searing away of your DNA, mm. uh, of your mother and your father. Yeah. Wow. Now, I know that's not something we really want to hear all the time because we like being part of our, 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 our earthly parents. But mm -hmm. I need you to understand, when you step into the father, he sears you to such an extent that the DNA in you begins to change. Yes. That's why he says, eat of me, drink of me, and you will live forever. Mm -hmm. Because my DNA is changing. And this incorruptible seed, this crown, is where I've gone into him, and I've spent multiple times and hours in him, breathing his breath, sitting with him as he speaks to me and washes glory over me. But it's going into the kingdom of heaven. It's stepping deeper into where he is. And having the understanding that I have the capacity in my spirit to soak myself in him. Yes. You guys okay? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. To go deeper and deeper and deeper. And if you either, if you could, it could be that you've never had this crown. All right. Because a lack of perception or understanding or revelation, a lack of knowledge. The Bible does tell us because of a lack of knowledge, my people perish. Yes. Now, how many of you understand, if this revelation was revealed to us when we got born again, we would have had a whole different perception of the Word. Amen. We would have been different people. As a matter of fact, I believe this generation would have already been appearing and disappearing, walking on water, doing things that's never been seen. Yes. All right. It would have been a norm for us because it could have been 40 years of walking in this. Yes, 40 years. I look at the people that's my mentor that's been walking in this for 40 years. This is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Amen. I love it. The crown of the anointing oil. Neither shall you go out 
of the sanctuary nor profane the sanctuary of the God of, of this of, the, of his God for the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon you I am the Lord this crown is given in the place that we encounter the presence of God in a deep relational way and it is the it is maintained by our daily connection with God I love this the anointing is not laying hands on somebody and they fall over <laughs> the anointing is an intimacy with Yeshua. It's a dimension of relational communication that you have with God that goes beyond the natural. Yeah. It is Him becoming your best friend. Mm. It are you, it's you spending time with Him and literally meditating in Him, meditating on His Word. It's beyond just eating and drinking of Him. It is having the ability to perceive Him as one with you. Where when you lift up your hand, He lifts up His hand. Yeah. Now, I know we don't understand that, because it's unnatural for me to even think that I can be like him, but that's what he's called us to be. Yeah. Yeah. He's called us to pr pr project the fullness of his glory in that dimension, so that when I come before him, and be, when I stand in his presence, he looks at me, and he wants to shift into me, yeah. and he wants me to shift into him. Mm -hmm. It's like when he opens his eyes, and he sees he wants me to see like he does. When he opens his mouth, what comes out of my mouth, the audible that comes out of my mouth has to be what he is either thinking or has said. Yes. It's more than prophecy. It's being an oracle. It's a dimension of growth that has to take place. And how many of us has either never had this or have lost it because of someone, someone saying something or just a perception or belief that we had? We have to go back and find it. You go back, find these crowns so you can begin to grow. And as we go back to the very first scripture I read, the image that you need to portray in the spirit is one that has these crowns on his head. Mm. It's a fully matured son that has walked in the fullness. See, the enemy wants to take these things from you so that you can't project the image. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. The crown of rejoicing. For what is our hope or joy? Or crown of rejoicing. And it's not even you in the presence of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, at His coming. Now, joy is our strength. All right. You know, it, it goes hand in hand with a feeling called happiness. Mm -hmm. But in the same breath, because I'm not happy, doesn't mean I don't have joy. All right. All right. right? Again, because the feeling does not direct me. Amen. A fact rests upon me and propels me into who I am. Yeah. Because I live in Him, I am joy. I am joy. I have the knowledge of eternal life. I have an understanding of Zoe life. I have the knowledge of who I am in Him. I operate in a dimension of joy. Now Satan loves to steal joy. Mm -hmm. Because he knows it's our strength. Yeah. He knows it's the power that God portrays into his son. See. Because that dimension of, of, of who I am walks in the earth and people can see it. It's like the glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Glory. Yeah. Mm. Glory. glory. When you are in the spirit and that crown is on your head, you will have unsafe people come to you and say, Man, what is it? What is on you? What is it about you? They feel the tangible reality in the natural world of the rejoicing. And it's very much like, like the glory. Yeah. Mm. yeah. People can see it. It's just there. No matter how you feel, it doesn't, it doesn't make you or change who you are. Mm. Amen. Are you guys okay? Yeah. yeah. Joy. The servant king crowns. I'm, I'm not going into too much detail because we, we have a lot to cover. And... Uh, we want to try and get through everything. But in the same breath, it's not that much. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys okay? Yeah. The last crown that Jesus is going to place upon your head is a servant king crown. Um, the interlocking crown is the, 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 the one that literally goes and brings everything together. It's the one that literally opens up the doorways for you to live and move and have your being in the kingdom of heaven. It is that which seals everything together and aligns it into a dimension that opens up for you to go in. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm. God wants us to learn how to be kings. Unless you are carrying your crown, you will never become a king. A king wears a crown. 
You need to understand, as I take these crowns, and it's not something you've gained. It's, uh, it's crowns given to you as you are intimate with Him, as you step into relationship with Him. That's, if you look at righteousness, you look at joy, you look at all these crowns, it comes all through intimacy, all through engaging with Yeshua. The gift of righteousness is the engagement of Yeshua. It's being in Him, accepting Him. So the idea here is that you begin to understand that as every crown is laid at the foot, it's you giving it up. Everything you give up in the kingdom of heaven is multiplied back to you to literally propel life into you and to, to, to take you to the next level. So when you're walking in the spirit with all these seven crowns, we go back to the very first scripture that we read and it says, Then I turned and I saw who was walking with me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. Stands. Along, among the lampstands, there was someone like the Son of God. Now, someone like the Son of God is uh, there's only one other creation that could be like Him. How many of you understand that? One other creation that could be like Him, and that's us. So when John saw this in the, in the, in the, in the spirit realm, he saw in the future a son, a daughter of the Most High that was fully glorified, that has had the crowns on his head, and that walks in the image of Christ. Exciting, isn't it? He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash around his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, in fact, as white as snow. His eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like glowing bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of raging waters. And in his right hand he had seven stars. And out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun when it shines in full force. Can, can you even imagine what that can look like? What I can look like. A, a, a face that shines like the fullness of the sun. Fullness of the sun. <laughs> it goes beyond what we can fathom or understand. And I really believe that, that the crowns and going through that process, and if you can remember the idea of every class was that you in that week go and engage the crown, whether you've lost it, or what the idea was to go and study, to go and meditate on what you need to do to regain the full value of that which was given to you. The gift of these crowns is to king you. It's a dimension of growth from becoming a, a walking in as a son and growing to become a king. Amen. I remind you, the only way you can be a king in essence is if you've made him king. Made him king. And you make him king by giving the kingdom of God over to him. Yes. Full dominion, full authority. Now, it sounds easy, but how many of you understand, in our lives, it's not something we just do and it's there. That's right. It's a process because it's not that easy for us to give everything over. Like because in, if you listen to the crowns, how you can lose it, how it's there, then it's not there. Then yeah. you have to go find it. Maybe yeah. we didn't even know that we could find it. We didn't even know we lost, lost it. it. So now that we have this process going, we have to go back and gain what we, what we have lost and, and then go through the process of keeping it and then giving it back to Him. Because now you've got something you've never even knew you had or you lost and you found it again. And naturally, we don't want to give it out. Naturally, you want to try and hold on to it because we don't trust Him enough knowing that He will always multiply back to us whatever we give to Him. Yes. That's why trading and sowing and tithing, uh, if you still believe in tithing, and giving and offering is so important because yeah. whatever I trust God with, He multiplies back to me. Thank you, Lord. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, restoring these crowns. Let's go through a process. You need to recognize the place that you lost it. You do this by a memory recall. Thinking um, what, is it, what it was like then, yes. I need to understand where did you lose it, what happened, who said what. Let it go back. Take yourself back into that place and begin to understand where you need to go to get it back. You must go back and spend time praying in the Spirit, drawing on memory with two things in mind. What it was like to wear it and what it was like to lose it. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Of course, you have to repent. Okay. Now again, I remind you, repent has nothing to do with sin. It's the changing of your mind. Changing of a mindset. Right? It's shifting your thinking from thinking with your brain to thinking with your spirit. Your heart. Mm. Amen. Because the reason we lost it is because we thought with our brains. Yes. We thought with our souls and our soul was in charge. 
So your soul directs and leads towards what man wants and what man says. Yes. So in essence, you're not really doing what God's telling you to do. You're doing what your leader or a man of God's telling you to do. And it might not be what God has for you. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so when I repent, I change the way I think and I start operating out of my spirit. And I relate what I do through what my spirit wants me to do. You need to restore it by faith, which means praying something like, Father, by faith today I take hold of that crown that was removed from me in, that, in this circumstance, and I ask you to guide me into bringing it back to where it's supposed to be. Thank you. Lord. See, it's a dimensional shift that takes place as you begin to go back into your timeline to regain what Satan took from you. Yes. It is literally understanding the power of Yahweh in every aspect, in every area of your life, knowing that the Father's desire for you is to begin to walk and operate and live in the kingdom of Yahweh to its full extent, because the power of who you are, uh, everything that brings you to maturity is in the kingdom of heaven. Come on. Now, if I have to recap on Kingdom of Heaven, it's that, that place where you're seated in Christ at the right hand of the Father, where you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Yeah. Now, what I love about that statement is that it's heavenly places. Places. So you're seated with Him in more than one place at a time. Your spirit literally multiplies into different aspects of the different kingdoms within the Kingdom of Heaven so that you can begin to be taught, trained and equipped so you can become what you're supposed to be. And, and that's why the idea of really just stepping into the Kingdom of Heaven after I've walked through the process of regaining all my crowns, I operate in the Kingdom now as a King. Now, as a King, I have the ability to start engaging with the angelic. Yes, yes. I have the ability to begin to understand and perceive the things that the angels are waiting for us to do. Yes. Because every angel on this earth has an assignment with your name on it. Yes. Come on, come on. And they can't do anything unless you begin. And it's not a commandment. I do not command angels. Mm -hmm. How many of you understand that? Yes. And, I, and I, again, I've shared this last night. But in, in the kingdom of heaven, there's no aggressive way of, of uh, managing a team. God doesn't work like that. God will not do anything that doesn't come out of relationship. Although we call it the Ten Commandments, we, have, we might not have done it yet yet, but the Ten Commandments is not commandments. It's a marriage contract. It's a ketubah. It's Yeshua saying, I don't want you to do this, this, and this. In this marriage, this is what you need to do. Yeah. Now, He's obviously waiting for us to finish our side of the contract, but it was never commandments because that's not His heart. Yeah. He doesn't want to command you things. Even if you look at the two commandments that Yeshua spoke about, it's to love Him with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. It's not a commandment. You can't command me to love you. That's right. I won't. That's I'll rebel. Woo, yeah. That's good. <coughs> so it is really relational. That's good. Yeah. And the Father's desire for you is not to feel that He's commanding you to do something. Yeah. It comes out of intimacy. Oh, I love you, so I'm going to do whatever, need, whatever I need to do. And it's the same with the angels. I am in relationship with them. I don't do stuff and tell them what to do. Although they are my servants, yeah. although they are there to, to minister to me, they are there to bring messages to me, they are there to propel me and take me deeper in, they are there to help me and guide me through certain things, they are there to realign and, and begin to shift things back into place in the earth. I do not tell them what to do. I speak to them and we relate to each other and they know their mandate, they know what needs to be done. You got to understand, it is not submit one to another in the way that we see it in a violent, aggressive MMA fight. <laughs> you know, where you have this, you know, this lock, the death lock, and he has to tap out. You know, the father doesn't have you in a death lock and wants you to tap out. Yes, That's not submission. Yes. You know, submission is a gentle act of I love you and you love me, let's work, let's work together. Yes. And a matter of fact, it is so intense that you become one and whatever you know needs to be done is done. Yeah. Yeah. Because your will is my will, my will is your will. Right. Yeah. Everything I do, I do because I know it's what I'm supposed to do according to what you've desired from me yeah. in your heart because our hearts are one. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Now it came about when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold a man was standing opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us, or are you our adversary? He said, No, rather indeed come now, as, I come now as the captain of the host of the Lord. Joshua said to him, What has my Lord to say to his servant? 
Now, I need you to understand something here. Um, you know, we can easily read over things like uh, he lifted up his head or he lifted up his eyes. But what happened here is that he shifted dimensions, Yahshua, and he started looking into the spirit and saw his angelic being in front of him, telling him that I am sent by, by, by Yahweh as the captain of his army mm -hmm. to help you fight this war. War, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand. Was that understanding and perception in what you cannot lose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But if you look at Joshua's life before this event, you'll quickly begin to understand it was one of growth yeah. and intimacy and deep, deep revelation regarding who the Father was. Yeah. It wasn't something that he would just happen. It was progressive growth. He, he had to over, uh, over uh, how can I say, uh, um, overgrow Moses. When Moses was in the presence, he came out, but Joshua stayed in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it went deeper. Ooh, yes, Lord. And the engagement here yeah, is so that we can be propelled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The angels don't want worship. It's the fallen ones that wants worship. Right. It's the ones that lives in the kingdom of earth, spirit realm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The ones yeah. that lives in the kingdom of heaven, they just want to lift you up. They just want to propel you. They just want to teach you, guide you, and minister to you. They want to bring you a message of life and hope. Yes, thank you, Lord. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. But just to let you understand or know this, there's uh, at least 283 um, references to, uh, to angels in the Bible. <coughs> the New Testament has more than the Old Testament. The New Testament has 176. The Old Testament has 107. And the idea is that we need to begin to understand and believe that it's legal for us to engage with the angels. I've had numerous conversations with angels. I have spent my, my, my days in the spirit communicating with them, being taught by them as they just guide me through certain places in the heavens. Amen. And they are there to lift you up. They are there to bless you. They are there to teach you the deep things of Yahweh. Yes, Lord. And they obviously come to a level... And then you have to shift, either go to one of the seven spirits, or they shift, or you go deeper into what the Father has for you. But the idea is that we start walking with them, right? Right. Yeah. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Amen. What is an angel? Well, I, I'm just going to touch base on, on that because it's a, eight part, it's a five, six part series. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to touch base just to kind of remind you of what we did do and how you have to go and engage with them again if you haven't. Okay, and, uh, <clears throat> and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. And they are not ministering spirits, are they not ministering spirits sent out to render a service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Now just to remind you, there's no other creation on the planet that will inherit salvation but sons of God. Amen. Me and you. Yes. Okay, so they are there for us. And it says, to be ministering spirits, to render a service, to propel us. Are you guys okay? Yes. Amen. So whenever you find winds and flames in scriptures such as Pentecost, it is likely that there was angels around. I also want to tell you that whenever you start feeling the intensity of God's presence, it is probably an angel coming in before the full presence of Yahweh hit. Mm. Because they, they carry the presence. They're in his midst all the time. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that at the throne, there's 10,000 times 10,000 angels just by the throne. That's 100 million angels. And as far as I have I studied and, and gone into it, I believe they say that every star is representing an angel. Yeah. Now, let me just explain to you. Scientists said that, that without fact, without an actual knowledge, up to this point, they've counted 300 billion Galaxies, galaxies, but there could be up to 900 billion galaxies, and every one of those galaxies has billions and billions of stars, and to add all of the stars up is innumerable. Yeah. It's impossible. But now they go as far as to say, oh, um, hmm, we might have missed something because there might be multi-universe. Yeah. There might be more than one universe. So now we can't even begin to fathom how many there is, because God doesn't stop with yeah. creation. It, it, it's impossible because what has been said goes on and can't be called back. Mm. 
Woo. You got to understand that? Still creating. Amen. They're still finding new things out there. Because, and first of all, it's just so big. Yeah. In our natural capacity, we can't get there. Matter of fact, they can't create something that can see that far. All right. But of course, the science of Yahweh is designed to go there. Yeah. But we haven't, and, and we haven't because Satan has a strategy. He's keeping us out there because the powers and principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this age are hiding in the stars, in the planets, in the suns, in the moons, where we can never go. And then, of course, the demons in the earth, lust, perversion, hate, murder, racism, all these things that we struggle with, and that's in our midst, they are linked to these demonic powers, and that's where they draw their strength from. But while the power and principality is not dealt with, that mountain is ruled, and only that which the, eight, the enemy allows in can protrude into the, into the body of Christ. Now, I know we can't perceive that because where is God in all of this? Isn't He sovereign? Isn't He supposed to bring in the fullness? No, no, no. You have dominion over the earth. Yes, yes. And the angels and every other creation is waiting for the sons yes. of God to wake up. But we've lost our crowns. Mm. We haven't gone in the heavens to, mm. to bring the multiplication of what we've lost back to its fullness and begin to walk in the revelation the Father has to engage with the angelic so we can begin to grow. We haven't done that. Right. So the earth is just waiting and nothing's taking place. And I say to you that if the Bible tells us that there's powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness of this age hiding, we have never seen them, yet they're operating in full power, then there has to be powers and principalities and rulers of the light of this age. That's angelic beings. <clears throat> That's angelic beings that has to begin to rule the mountains that the enemy has occupied. Now, a mountain in the spirit is not an actual physical mountain. It's a stronghold. Yes. It's a, a, a dimension that the enemy has taken hold. It's a gate. It's a door. It, it, it's a dimension that he keeps closed and only lets in what measure he feels is eligible for that type of space. Mm. Because I remind you, Satan was a covering cherub. The covering cherub stand around Yahweh and as the glory and the fire comes out of him, because I don't know how to express it, but, but Yahweh, and if you look at him, if you stand before him, it's like a bonsai. I don't know how to say that. It's just his glory, his fire. It's like, it's like the crackling of fire. It's the, uh, the, the sound of waves breaking. It's the blowing of wind. It is the, the excessive amount of power, that the lightning and fire that's just there, and it's him covering it all with revelation and insight and knowledge <clears throat> beyond what we can ever fathom or understand. It is just the, the multitude of, of God that's just standing there, sitting there, His glory is <clears throat> oozing life into everything it touches. It is a dimension of power that we can't fathom. Yet it's sitting there and that all goes into the covering cherub. Yeah. And then eventually it can't handle it anymore and it turns. Yeah. And as he turns, all that goes into the earth. Yeah. So Satan has fallen. He still has all of that. Mm -hmm. It's in him. Now he trades with it. Right. Yeah. So he only lets certain bits of it into the earth. Yeah. Because he's got the powers and principalities and the rulers holding the keys to the gates and the doors. Right. And let me tell you, we're supposed to be the gates and the doors. Yes. Right. We're supposed to be the key. Yeah. And there's a power and principalities. Our, our uh, prince of roaring angels have not been set on these mountains to guard it. The power of the principalities are there and they're guarding it and they're preventing the fullness to come in. And that's what I've said to you. Every time I've slayed a dragon and I don't post in any, any of these things because it's not something I do lightly in any way, fashion or form. But every time I've done it and I had to go back to actually literally cut open the dragon or the giant, diamonds, rubies, gold, and the power that I see in Yahweh when I look at him falls out of the belly. It was kept, it was never given to the saints. And the yeah. Father said to me, take it, put it in your mountain and trade with it for the nations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so that's what I mentioned that we have to begin to understand the angelic wants us to, to protrude into. That's why the crowns are so important, because you have to grow to that place. Yeah. And, and I remember, if you remember some of the scriptures we read in, um, <clears throat> in, um, regarding the seven spirits, you know, as a, as a child... You, although you own the kingdom because of your father, and it's all yours, you have servants and uh, um, maid servants and teachers and uh, people to equip you that are, is over you because you are just too much of a baby to, to, to rule over them. That's right. 
So although you are the one that owns everything, they're still over you. So even at that point, the angels are over you. Yeah. You don't tell an angel what to do if you're still a baby. Come on now. <laughs> so we need to grow. Grow up. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. It's a list of um, descriptions, 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 <laughs> and names and titles of angels. So there's, of course, many, 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 excessively many, 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 many different types of angels. We can't even begin to fathom it. There's a measure of them named in the Bible. And, of course, you can just begin to think how many more there is. But we're looking at guardian angels. We're looking at archangels, seraphim, cherubim, living creatures, dominions, virtues, powers, attitudes, principalities or rulers, judgments, watchers, salvation, Glory angels, guarding angels, scrolls, lions, seals, seal angels, mandate, assignment, art, grace, holiness, healing, gathering, anointing, provision, mantle, worship, treasury, finances, fragrance, revival, portal, deliverance, warring, wisdom, pillars, commandment, a commandant, hunter, and reaping angels. It's just a list of some of the angels that has been engaged with. Now, me personally, uh, I have experienced some glory angels, some watcher angels. As a matter of fact, if you go to the mountain of God, I believe that there, uh, on the mountain of God, there's a watcher angel there. Uh, as far as I know, according to what Ian has taught us, his name is uh, Metrodon. Um, he's a watcher angel. Now, of course, these angels are over the earth. They are doing all kinds of things. Uh, the seraphim which is a fiery serpent, the cherubim, is angels that we've engaged with, the guardian angel I personally have, everyone in this room has a guardian angel, I personally uh, are blessed enough, and I believe everyone in some measure or form according to your destiny scroll has an um, archangel, and, 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 and I believe according to the structure of heaven, there's ten archangels, um, three of these archangels were the, the um, top part of the, the, the management, <laughs> angel, uh, the Lucifer fell, so there's only two, um, Gabriel and Michael, but then there are seven other archangels, and it's all supposed to make up ten. Yeshua has uh, fulfilled the purpose of Lucifer, and uh, just to fulfill the canopy of ten, which is the governance of the angelic in the heavens. Now, I'm, I'm going back in, and I'm telling you things that you might look at me and frown, frown upon, but it's just the reality and the obviousness of what is out there. Okay, so I have an um, archangel called um, Zephkiel that is assigned to our bloodline. He's not with me all the time, but when I teach, he brings me a knowledge and understanding of what I've known and how to present what I know to those around me. That's part of what he does. Um, there's many other aspects to it, but I'm not going to go into detail. Um, I have personally engaged with um, warring angels. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the meetings I had... Uh, with friends of ours, it wasn't even my meeting, I met up with a prince, uh, with a warring angel, and his name was Marco. And it was very exciting for me, I mean, he sat with him, spoke to him over a while. Matter of fact, I engaged with him again about a week ago, and it was sad news for me. I'm going to go into detail regarding that, but uh, something is about to shift, something has been taken back from somebody in that site that's not been occupied, and so I need to now find the one that needs to really do this and is going to run with it to his fullness. Amen. Because if you have been given something and you're not using it, they'll take it back. Yep. Yep. You have hunter, hunter angels, which I, I believe hunter angels are there for salvation. Um, but in the same breath, they are a very aggressive violent, I know that sounds terrible, but they are the type of angels you'll meet and they will be full of scars. They are more than just warring angels. They are demon shredders. Mm -hmm. um, but they are there for salvation. Okay? And you've got the reaping angels. There's just so much. There's just uh, excessive amounts of revelation that the Father wants us to have. And I thought we've never engaged with these angelic beings, so there's just no perception of anything that's being said right now. But the idea is that you, as a son, go in and begin to speak because there will be activity as soon as you communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, in my house, when I sit on my couch in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the mornings, it's dark. 
We have a small light on front by the TV that just projects a little bit of light into the room so that when one of my kids wants to climb into bed with us, help me Jesus, uh, he won't fall over his own toys and break his neck. Um, so there's always light in the house. And I would see movement all the time. And I, I, when I was younger, I would think, okay, it's a demon. And I would start binding every little demon that moves. But I'm going to understand there's no demon in my house. As a matter of fact, they won't even come near my house. Amen. Not because of anything special that I am, but because of the Son of Yahweh that I work, uh, operate as. Amen. And the fullness of the glory that's in me. Not sometimes, all the time. Yes. Amen. So I know that these movements are angels. I engage with them and it's increased over the last six months. Because there's been more engagement. As a matter of fact, one of the meetings we had on Wednesday, on my way to the meeting, I was just speaking to um, uh, Passion and Focus, and I was just really engaging with them. And by the time I got to the meeting, I was so drunk, I was falling over my own feet. I was so heavy. I was like, what is going on here? Because they bring the presence of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. Exciting, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Now, I remind you that as much as there is... Angels, and I don't want to go into this in any way, fashion, or form, but there is wickedness in heavenly places. So there's powers and principalities out there that we have to come against and we have to nullify their works. <coughs> Our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Oh, come on, seriously? <laughs> yeah. But against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of the darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Where? In heavenly, heavenly places. places. These powers and principalities don't hang around on the ground. Mm. They know they want to go where you will not be. Mm. Right. They go where the sons of God won't be. Because now we have, over the last couple of years, um, uh, 400 maybe more, we have been taught that, well, you can't um, do, have anything to do with your stars. Mm. Right? What do they right. call it? Um, Astrology. 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 Yeah. You have... Um, Astronomy, you, 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 a witch just uses the sun and the moon to fly, yeah. uh, the alignment of the, the sun and the moon, they use the space out there, so we've been taught to just stay away. Ooh, it's Satan's <laughs> like strategy mm -hmm. to keep the suns out of the heavens, yeah. because once we go there, we're going to see them, and if you see them, you can eliminate them. Thank That's you. what the court of war, the court of angels are there for. Exciting, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Let's just look at some, uh, some of the characteristics of, of the angels. They are awesome. They are, they are intelligent and wise. They will blow you away. Let me tell you, they're older than what you are. They've been around longer than what you've been. They have seen more than what you can ever think of seeing. They have the ability to project the image of Yahweh over you because that's where they come from. And I mean, you understand, you kind of project what you spend time with. So they are intelligent and wise. They are very patient. They are meek. They are joyful. They are modest. They are holy. They are glorious. They are immortal. Yeah. Not immoral. Right. <laughs> They're immortal. They are mighty, they are powerful, and they are obedient. Mm -hmm. They will do whatever is told to them if it's aligned with the will of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to become an oracle. That's the dimensional growth that we've spoken about. So that when you ask or speak something, it has to be aligned with what the scroll is written on. Mm -hmm. Are you guys okay? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> they have wolves, which means they, they can say no. If what you ask them is not of God, they're going to say no. If what you ask them is not according to the scroll that they operate with or the mandate they sent with, they will say no. Mm -hmm. All right. That's exciting, isn't it? They are created spirit beings. They have spirit bodies, <clears throat> which means they are two-strand DNA. Soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not like us. <laughs> That's why we are above over them. Right? Before you get born again, they are over you. Did you know that? All right. But when I get born again and I've added the third strand of DNA, I change into his image because he's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three. Three. Angels are not three. <clears throat> three. They need no rest. They can appear selectively. They can ascend and descend. They speak different languages. 
They have limited knowledge, which means they can be taught. Matter of fact, and I know this sounds boastful, but it's not. I have seen them in the meetings many times wanting to learn. It's just how they are. Angels seem to be described differently depending on the context. So it depends on where you're at and what you're doing, they can change to fit that. Exciting, isn't it? Amen. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> we are surrounded by an angel army. So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, O oh Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his servant's eyes, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. The Father's desire for us is to begin to see what is out there. If there's a hundred million angels just around the throne, and the throne of Yahweh is in a kingdom <coughs> just shifted into another place, which means it's within where we are today. As a matter of fact, I've shared it before, I was lying in a church, I was busy soaking, and my eyes opened to the kingdom of heaven while I was, and within the room where we at, the entire throne and a hundred million angels was right there. I remind you that space and time is something we are accustomed with, and so we understand, well, if I have a matchbox, you guys want to know what a matchbox is? A small yeah. little box yeah. with matches in? Yeah. That is a very small space, and only a certain amount of things can go in there. Right. I could probably take uh, five, maybe maybe ten uh, quarters and put it in there, and the box will be full. Okay. Okay, but in, 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 in a place where there's no time and space, the entire kingdom of heaven can fit in there. Now, how we understand or perceive that, we, we don't get it, but let me explain to you. Um, inside of me is the kingdom of God, which means the fullness and all of God, every dimension, every area, everything that is, is, is of God, everything that consists of God is in me. Yeah, yeah. And then in the same breath, I live in Him, yes. which is indescribable and beyond what I can fathom, because if I have to take myself as six foot one and step into the kingdom of heaven where there's no time and space, I could be a lack of a dot. Lack of a dot. Oh, lack of a dot. <laughs> but in the same breath, I stand in him and I reach from his head to his toes as I'm in him and in his hands the universes. Amen. <clears throat> so it's unexpressible, unexplainable. Um, Yeshua cast out 6,000 demons out of one man and the 6,000 demons have to go into 2,000 pigs. Mm -hmm. So can we ever begin to understand what is inside of you, what can come out of you? And the fact that time and space is not what we ever perceive. And the lack of time and space will blow us away. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and of course, when we begin to see what the Father has made available everywhere you go, and if you have the communication with the angelic and you're befriended with them, they can align and shift your world into place as you direct, as according to your scroll and who you are. But we haven't worked with them, we haven't engaged with them, so we have not been able to do what they want us to do. Amen. You guys okay? What's the time is flying? Yes. Eh? Jeez. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> now, there's many dimensions that, that angels can open, and there's things that we can do that can open portholes for the angelic to come. Flags and banners, music, lights and colors have an effect in this realm. They, they change the atmosphere and things begin to move. At times uh, I have experienced different aspects of manifestation of the angels as I am in the church. For example, a lady in one of our meetings on Tuesday night started just out of the blue to take a flag and while we soak she just rocks around and she flags the flag. I don't know if that's what you'd call it. And of course, I don't know if she knows what she's doing, I'm sure she does, but there's an excessive release of the angelic in that action. You know? It's not just 
uh, what comes out of your mouth. It's not just the music that's being played. It's the spirit within that which is doing the action. Amen. <laughs> and it creates a porthole for the angels to begin to up and down, yeah. to ascend and descend. And as they do, they bring the presence. Yeah. And they take the presence. Because I understand the presence of a son is extremely valuable in the kingdom of heaven. Exciting. Do you guys understand that? Because we haven't been there. Yeah. So it's been an absentee. Now, it's been an absentee because of sin, but through the restoration of Yeshua and the blood of Yeshua, we now have access in there, but we haven't gone. So when a son eventually does end up there, or a daughter, it is amazing. There's literally a stop and applause, an excitement in the heavens. And the angels absolutely love it. They love having us around. They enjoy our presence. Let me tell you another thing about angels. They have no record of sin. Mm. Mm. They have no perception of it. They do not care for it. They do not look at it. They do not hate it or love it. They can't see it. It's not in their DNA. It's not part of who they are. Do you guys understand that? Yes. yes. Because the kingdom they live in doesn't have any of it. There's no trace of it in any way, fashion, or form. That's why you can be sinning and your angel will be right there, protecting you, looking out for you, looking after you, guiding you, propelling you. And then give us license to go do that now, but the idea is that they don't judge you for what you do. They look and stand by you for who you are. Who you really are. Who you really are. Yeah. Okay. That's the very, very base of the angels. Let's stand, let's pray together, and let's see if there's any questions, and we go from there. Father, I know uh, that as we stand up, there's a, there's a propulsion deeper into you. And the, the idea of this morning's two messages was really to understand and have revelation regarding the growth that needs to take place as I get restored to me all the crowns that I've lost in my yes. walk with you, Father, the progression of having to pick him up, go into the spirit, regain them, lay them at your feet, and have you, our awesome, majestic, beautiful God, multiply it back into me so that I can begin to enter in to the fullness of the kingdom of heaven where I begin to engage with the angelic and they begin to reveal to me the heart of Yahweh. They begin to propel me deeper and deeper into relationship with you, Lord. The idea has always been that we walk with all that which you have created. And I've been <clears throat> spending a lot of time in the heavens because it's where I live and move now. And Father, I know that the, every creation out there in the kingdom of heaven is only there to propel us. Their desire is always and has only been to take us deeper and deeper into you. And so, Father, today, I ask that everyone in this room, as we begin to engage the crowns again, as we begin to engage the angels again, that we will begin to grow deeper and deeper into what you have for us. Because you're a majestic God, and we love you. And we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Is there, do you guys want to maybe have lunch, so we can ask questions when we come back? I don't know. Is it too early for lunch? Yes, it's too early for lunch. Okay, let's do questions. I mean, I thought 12 o'clock would be lunch. I don't know. I don't know. Let, let, who, what, does you guys have any questions? Oh, please. Well, you were talking about gates and portals and doors. Yeah. That scripture that says, lift up your heads, O you gates, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory will come in. Yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. That, that's the scripture that we relate to when I say we are gates. <coughs> we are gates and doors. And lift up your head always means go into the spirit. That's the idea behind it. As I lift up my head, I'm in the spirit, knowing that I'm a gate and a door, and that the gate and the doors has been occupied by the demonic. And so when I begin to take hold of what is supposed to be mine, and I reallocate myself into the position that I'm supposed to stand in, I again become the gate and the door. And I remind you that I am a chair covering cherub. Which means I have the ability to stand around him and all the glory and all the fire of Yahweh protrudes into me. And as I stand on the gate, 
and stand on the mountain as a gate, as a door, that revelation then goes into the nation where I stand, where I live. That's why I say to you guys, these meetings are not so much the amount of people that come into the meetings, although it's nice to have a lot of people, but the idea is to speak it into the atmosphere as a gate and a door. To have the fullness of His glory protrude into a nation where although they have experienced a lot of uh, His presence because of, of uh, the faithfulness of our God, they've never experienced the fullness of His glory as that it comes from the kingdom of heaven. So once we begin to do it, it literally shifts a nation into place and begins to align things as it's meant to be. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah.